In 2021, Dr. Ahmad Rahim, Kotauk Family Endowed Chair and Associate Professor at Bellevue University and Principal Consultant and Founder at Inclusive360 LLC, gave the keynote speech for the Association for Distance Education and Independent Learning's 29th Annual Conference. He shared his powerful story and the positive impact of distance education in his life. I recently had the opportunity to talk again with Ahmad to discuss the inspiration of teachers and students and hear his advice for people teaching today. Ahmad, thank you so much again for being able to chat with the Association for Distance Education and Independent Learning. It's, it's our pleasure to hear from you again. Hey, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Wonderful to see you again. Absolutely. So something that I'm, I'm loving to do this year is talk with educators, um, hear about some of their inspirations from some of their educators um, that they had, and also just the work that they're doing with, with their students. So something I, I'll, I'll ask you, Ahmad, you had a chance at your keynote to talk about your past, but I'd love to hear just what's, what's something that you learned from one of your most impactful teachers? You know, so Go, you know, in regards to life changing moments, um, Nicholas Poulos was one of my professors. He, he passed away, I think, about five or six years ago, but he was my human service professor at, community, at this uh, community college, Onondaga Community College here in Syracuse, New York. And, you know, he had this amazing gift in, 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 um, in connecting with students, you know, showing empathy, right, towards uh, students' situation. Um, he, he always got off the podium when he spoke. So even though there was this, you know, he, he had this lecture hall that was, you know, pretty much, um, uh, scheduled just for him because he had one of the largest classes in human services. And he was also department chair at the time. Um, but he, he always got off the podium every time he spoke and he, he kind of gravitated towards students that he, he kind of identify that you know they were either confused or they wanted more from him based on how they were leaning in or how you know based on their facial expression he just had this great emotional intelligence right it's something that he developed throughout the years and even when i was 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 uh was struggling in his class you know he he really understood what i was struggling with and made every you know every opportunity to come speak to me reach out to me you know, and, and not wait for me to go to him, but he was always trying to find ways to go to me. So, so how, how I teach, um, um, I, I hope that I am, uh, um, uh, you know, following his path in regards to what he, he did and taught me. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Now, what's, what's one example of, of one of your students inspiring you by their resilience or, or creativity? Well, recently we had a student um, that I mean it's 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 amazing, but he he had three strokes, right? He is about 56, 58. Um, he has heart issues. He barely graduated high school. He graduated with GED. Um, I think he had six or seven kids and military guy, and he just recently graduated, right? So he he he, he completed all his coursework, right? Uh, he's also a first generation college student in his family. So even that's yeah. more incredible. You know, so here's a guy that have all these health issues, um, all these responsibilities, um, an adult student that that also work two or three jobs and have a spouse and things like that. And and he take care of his grandkids. He loves his grandkids. All he talks about in class is grandkids. But he took every effort to accomplish this. And And technically, you know, he has a what we would consider a tenure job at a government agency, right? So he doesn't need this degree, but he did it to, to prove a point for himself and for his kids. So that to me is very inspiring. Somebody that really don't need it, but they did it for themselves, right? And they did it for their family. Yeah, no, thanks, thanks for sharing that. Um, one last question. What's one piece of advice you'd give to people who are working in education today? You know, I, I think we have to also look for ways to to reach out to our students in different ways, right? We we have a lot of different students now, especially when it comes to the online environment. It used to be 
for, for, for non-traditional students, we offer, often label them as adult students, right? Non-traditional students, often adult working students, but it's very different now. We have a lot of younger students that are coming to, you know, that, that are coming to these non-traditional programs. These are students sometimes straight out of high school, right? That because of their, their, their family obligations, because of their economic situation, they decided to stay local and go online and work to help out their parents. And then we have this, this the, the baby boomers that retired and their 401k is not doing too well, right? And they feel they need to be retrained and come back to the workforce. So it's, it's all over the place. So we have to look for ways to not, not create systems that require them to adapt to our learning environment, but look for ways where we could help adapt to their learning environment and their circumstances, right? And really get to know the students, that every student have certain challenges that, that they sometimes have no control over. And they're not taking advantage of the situation. That's just the situation that they're in. And we have this space that we are privileged to teach in, right? As educators, this is something that is a privilege that sometimes we, we, we often neglect to see, right? We, we, take, we take that for granted. Right. And don't realize these sometimes these students are really jumping over tons of hurdles just to be in this online environment. They're going to school. They're, they're, they're working two or three jobs. They're taking care of kids, just like the other student that I just talked about. Right. And so we, we have to figure out that 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 balance. Right. Create some flexibility, but also create some structure. But 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 know when it's time to 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 really step off of that podium right and work with our students individually and figure out how we could help help push them forward yeah awesome advice and thanks for the reminder too that um what the privilege is sometimes after a stack of papers it's easy to forget that but um you know when we keep that in mind it just I, I think it makes it all the easier to kind of go forward and and make sure we're providing both that structure and the flexibility so awesome Always, always wonderful, Ahmad, to hear, hear your advice. So thank you again for everything. And for anybody who's watching at home, uh, check out this video description where you can find out about how you can follow Dr. Ahmad Rahim on social media. Um, thanks, everybody. And thank you, Dr. Rahim. It was a pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye. To hear Dr. Ahmad Rahim's complete keynote speech at Adil's 29th annual conference, click the link in the video description. Be sure to like and subscribe to the Adil Professional Development channel for the latest from Adil. Thanks for watching.